Doc to set my parents down and said my life was fragile. Perspective is the game, I guarantee the name. Just put your head down, do the work, and everything will change. Sipping tea, help the feels, yeah, that's what I wanted. Being patient, hell, it's tricky if I'm being honest. She would carry me, preach in positivity. July 22nd, 2020. Super fired up. Big shout out to my brave change, Robert Cloudy in the building. Lucia, chef, what's good? Kelly Hill in the building, Love Tribe. Big shout out to YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. I see you all. Twitch squad in the building. Where's the LinkedIn family? Let's see a LinkedIn logo. Leave your comment, leave your comment. Good to see you brought. Tap, I really it. I hope as much as I have COVID. Uh, and I'm really excited for the guest today. Abel Franco, what's good, my man? It's been really fun having you part of this. If you've been following every episode, Abel, good, uh, really good friend of mine from uh, grammar and middle school. We relived some uh, wrestling memories too, so that was fun. Really, really good to see all of you. Now, the big question is who's part of the share squad? Who is part of the share squad? Who right now is going to copy the URL, hit the share link in their ecosystem, whether it's Twitch, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, who is gonna take that URL and paste it into a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post or Twitter post or just hit the little share button. Let's get some new homies in here. If you have shared the URL right now to your audience on social, please leave hashtag share squad. Let me see who else is in here. Vicky, good to see you always. Luke says, hey guys, that means he's from Australia. Orlando McKenzie, I appreciate you on LinkedIn. Somebody just hit shared. I wanna give shout outs to shared. House of Social, uh, let's see what's going on. What's Gucci, everything's Gucci, Bassy Boom. What's good, Hannah Lee, you're amazing. Thank you for the love, Big Four Lauderdale. What's up, chat, share, 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 share. Amanda Smith is part of the share squad. New England Property Disposal is part of the share squad. Dustin, how are you? Great. Buying some Pokemon? Yeah, I got two on the way. All right, we'll <laughs> share that. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, everything's going to be sold out. I think, uh, I bought a, a Red Shakes E3 giveaway promo, 1999, PSA 10 last night. How much? Maybe 625, I think I got it for. Interesting. It was a promo card. Oh, on eBay? On eBay. Promo card, first year E3 Pikachu. Yep. You missed it. I Damn. grabbed it. I'm also going completely ham on vintage basketball. Like just Dr. J, Akeem, Magic Bird, Barkley, Drexler, Ewing, Stockton, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, going hammy, ham, ham on old basketball. Like I'm a ham sandwich. <laughs> All right, let's get into the show. Gary B, what's up, my man? What's good, JC? How are you? Hey, I'm really good, bro. This is an absolute pleasure, brother. Thank you. Man. Where are you from? I'm from Perth, Australia, my man. Yeah, the west coast of Australia, man. It is. I know like, it. It's beautiful there. Yeah, man. It, it's crazy to actually uh, be talking to you right now, man. This has been a big manifestation, like three, five years in the making. Before we get into it, man, I want to shout out my manager, Julian. He he hustled this. He made it all happen. We're talking to Andy K and. Um, Zane for some time, so big shout out to Julian and Nick, obviously. Of course. Um, yeah, my man. Uh, <clears throat> I just, I just, what? So I just start off, man, and I just tell you a Please, little bit yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Give me so, some context and give me the question. Yeah, so my name is JC. I'm an artist, an independent artist, uh, representing Australia. I'm true to my music. I'm passionate about my music. Um, and yeah, last, some examples of what I've done last year, I put out 26 music videos every single week. Every song produced, mixed, mastered by myself. Um, dropped that every week, and that was a Guinness Book World Record. I also um, every yeah, like follow, following the Ross Blueprint. I've dropped songs every week. I've been on TikTok, man. I've got a following on TikTok thanks to you. You got me onto that when the time was right. Um, I've got, and now I'm in this position now where I've got fans building. I've got you know half a million TikTok followers. I've got you know, 20,000 Spotify listeners. I've got labels now hitting me up, big major labels hitting me up, and I've got um, my songs on commercial radio. And I'm just like, me and the team, we're thinking, what's the next move? Um, where do we go from here in this? I think this, uh, 
the next, I think the next move is to build out a distribution network that isn't just social media. What yeah. I mean by that is, if I'm an artist and I've got everything that I just heard you talking about, the thing I'm thinking about is how do I make sure that more people hear it the next time I put something out? And the way to do that is of course things like TikTok or YouTube or Instagram. But the other way to do that is to actually spend 500 hours as a team reaching out to every music blogger, every music you know, uh, communicator, like Mike Boyd on my team who puts, who, uh, puts playlists together, reach out to a thousand playlists, Spotify playlist curators, reach out to a thousand music bloggers, reach out to a thousand Instagram music accounts that share new stuff, create one-to-one relationships with distribution, reach out to 5,000 YouTube influencers and say, yo, I would love to make you some original music. Um, Man. Please. Thank yeah, right. uh, yeah, and that that and that's funny that you say that because that's what we have essentially been doing. I don't know to the extreme of a thousand or whatever. It, but it yeah. takes the it takes the extreme because when you have a new song, if you got thirty four people, only three are actually going to put it out because they got a bunch of other shit going on. They want to write about something else. They want to do something else. So, I actually do think it's to the extreme. My big thing is if you want to live your dream, yes. and this is for everybody who's watching right now, if you want to live your dream how the fuck are you not going to the extreme? And I mean it, it it's like, you know, it's kind of like working out, right? Like I'm blown away. Yesterday, Mike, my trainer, I work out virtually with him every day and he had me doing this goblet squat and it was like 52.5, like max weight on the Bowflex thing that I had to order. But the amount of reps he asked me to do and he had me do one and a half and I, and I just remember thinking, I was like, I can't do this. And I did it and I was like, right, like if I want to get healthier, if I want to build muscle, if I yeah. want to build my core and my legs so when I'm 85, I don't trip and that starts the path to death. Well, of course, I've got to push myself to extreme. If you're an artist, if you're somebody who's trying to make it, become famous, become an influencer, make a million dollars, all these crazy things that come out of people's mouths. I actually think, JC, like I'm excited we're together. It's like, no, no, it's a thousand. I, I I completely agree with you, Gary. I am I am all about that. It's, a, it's the same way, you know. I watched every single Russell interview. I've watched all your um, Gary V um, podcast. You, you must have loved when Russ was on my podcast. That must have been one of your favorites. Oh man, that's that's what did it. I saw that, and it's I saw the song a week. I'm a huge Russ fan. I produce all the stuff, and, I, and, I, and that's what did it. We had the same conversation, and I was like, I want to do a song a week as well. And that's what did it. And it was a big learning curve, man, because. It goes to, sh- it really tests you and it really goes back to what are your intentions behind doing it? You know, for me, I, I did the song a week and my results weren't like one blew up, one did this. It was, it really humbled me and it made me realize that, you know, it's really about the music and it's really about the love and the passion and what's your intention? What are you trying to bring to the world? JC, and, I uh, really, I really, 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 really believe that the number one you thing that you and the team have to figure out is yeah. more distribution. Okay. Period. Right. Like, like I, I, honestly, you want to do, everybody's watching, you want to do something interesting, go type in my name on YouTube yeah. and search least views. Right. Go watch how much shit I've done for how long. This is actually re- like, this is really relevant because I was like, we actually had a discussion last night because we're, we're in the middle between putting, we don't know whether to put it all out and then have it, our flaws out there and our perfections out there. Oh, and then yes. Yeah. That, 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 don't even debate no more. Imperfections okay. out, imperfections right. out. Other thing, I would look very heavily into video game culture. I would hit up a ton of Twitch streamers, try to win that esports video game culture. That's a real spot. Right, right. Um, okay, sweet. Also, Gary, I wanna say thank you for the follow on TikTok, my, my, my guy. I don't know if that was you who did that. That was or me. That was- that was me. Oh, so you watching, are you watching? I'm the only one, I'm the only one who controls who I follow. Okay. I'm the only one, I'm the only, wow. there, there's a reason there's a Team Gary B account so yeah, that right. they can do those things. I, everything that's Gary B, I write, I follow, I live. It's me. All right, Jason, I'm going to run because I got a bunch of people coming on. Okay, man. Love you, man. Right. Keep pushing it. Follow Thank JC, you, everyone. Take care. Please. Move it. Just move it. What's up, old friends? What's up, old friend? Tomorrow. So listen, everybody. I was gonna do a podcast this week and bring together, and notice that Tamar said, old friend. 
We've known each other from day one Twitter. We're talking OG life when there was like me and her and like 5,000 people on Twitter, early Twitter. Uh, and we were catching up. She's doing something incredible that I've been like really passionate about that she's up to. And we were just catching up on Zoom last week. And I said, tomorrow, you know what? I'm gonna do a podcast and get four or five old friends together and do an old friend show. Unfortunately, I just got a little sidetracked with my business, so last night, big shout out to tomorrow to always staying persistent, because I'm busy, I'm chaotic, my intent is there, but I'm getting hit by baseballs left and right. She hits up yesterday, like, hey, my, my fundraising for my, uh, and I'll let her explain it, and I was like, fuck, cool, let's get you on with Tea with Gary Vee. So, tomorrow, do me a favor, A, Tell everybody what you're up to because I want everybody supporting it. Dustin, pay attention to the URL or or this is probably good because she can share it all on on, on Twitter after. But I think a lot of you are gonna be blown away. Yeah, that's too long of an eye fund me. So let's put her Twitter handle and tomorrow after you're done here, put the links up. If you if you love me in any way, this is a real OG friend of mine. Please go contribute a little bit to her project. Wait to hear what it is. Tomorrow tell them what it is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. All right. So um, I, first of all, yeah, I've known Gary Vee since the early, early tech days. I was working in tech and marketing for over a decade and, uh, didn't realize when Gary basically had his first kid, I had my own first kid and I had a postpartum depression for, it lasted for nine years. Uh, I hit a rock bottom in 2018. Uh, I was not in a good place, woke up, went through the motions. That was my life. Um, one day I, I found a little vial of perfume in a cabinet and, when you're depressed, you don't care what you look like. I certainly didn't. You definitely don't care what you smell like. And the thing is, most people put on perfume with no objective but to like smell good for other people. But that obviously wasn't me. I didn't give. I didn't care about myself Shit. at all. And that was life changing for me. I don't really know exactly what it was, but it was an impetus to start living my life again. And I decided I was going to do something in this perfume world. I started studying scents, reading books. Uh, consuming all the media possible, joining all the communities wherever I could possibly be. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start a brand called Tamar, Tamar.com. And with the objective of making perfume uh, have basically happiness in a bottle. And I was crazy, but I launched, uh, did a soft launch in May. And I'm still in the middle of this fundraising right now because right now is the right time. Um, thinking about, I mean, it's the worst time financially, but at the same time, we don't feel good for ourselves right now. We're stuck at home. We don't love ourselves. And this little thing that you could do and revisit this sniffing your wrist throughout the day, it can actually change you and make you feel better. So that's my story. And I'm in the middle of fundraising for this. Everybody, when I think about self-esteem, it is the only thing I kind of almost care about because it leads to happiness, which then leads to kindness for others. When Tamar was telling me scent drove this reality for her, it just really hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was about doing it for you instead of doing it for someone else, hit me like a ton of bricks. So this is a dear friend, please, please, please go to Tamar.com. But also, Tamar, do me a favor because I know you're at Tamar on Twitter. Please put up links to your your funding page right now. I would love the Vayner Nation to give a little love. I've done yeah. my part. Please do a little bit of your part. I love you. Keep pushing this story. I think there's something, I, Tamar, I really believe you'll be historically correct about this. Because after you told me, I did some homework. It's fucking fascinating. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so if you go to tamar.com, there's actually a link that you want to learn about the campaign. That's live. It ends on uh, 731, so that's next Friday. So your support is definitely appreciated. Thank you so much, Gary. I really, really appreciate it. And everybody, go hit up Tamar right now with further questions or highs and hellos. Like everybody go to your Twitter right now and just say what's up, Tamar, especially if you're interested in this project so that she can engage with you on Twitter for the rest of the day. Awesome. Love you. Talk to you soon. Yeah, love you too. Take care. I want to do, Dustin, I want to do more of that. I want to, I want to do a little bit more of like sneaking in like one person, just giving love during tea with Gary Vee. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I'll, Which is I'll, nice, I'll right? Yeah. Yeah, but I want it to be authentic to me, not the team. Right. So like the team needs to remind me to like, what inspired you today or who do you want to help today? Instead of like, we pick this person. Cause okay. I don't want to be Zane's fucking thing that inspired Zane. <laughs> I think we have a good understanding of that. <laughs> it's for you, not for us. No, no, no I, I want to pick it. All right. All right. Just let us know. I we will. got it. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Dustin, what's good? What's going on, man? Life is good. You? Oh, it's going great. 
Good. Uh, first off, I've got to just say, I mean, thank you so much for, for everything you've done. I, I started my YouTube channel about a hundred days ago, uh, mainly focused around collectibles, investing, sports card investing slash collecting. Um, we get in all things, action figures and video games and all that stuff. I think it's all cool. By the way, the, the two categories, action figures and video games that I collected in between and flipped in between my 1993 and my two years ago sports cards, me and AJ's garage selling was 80% toys and video games. Really? AJ and, I, AJ and I were so right about video games. We were buying Nintendo cartridges for a quarter at garage sales and yard sales a piece, maybe a dollar, but only if it was Contra and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out and Zelda and Mario's in like, in like 2000, 2003, two, 2003, at action, we crushed wrestling figures. We crushed, I mean, at that point, even in 2002, three, it was hard to find Transformers, G.I. Joe's, Star Wars, oh, yeah. but, we, but we would. But I, I probably am, as knowledgeable about action figures. I mean, I know more about Mego star, like superhero stuff, like, like, you know, I mean, the amount I know about LJNs and, and, and Hasbro wrestling figures, uh, I know Thundercats and like, I know that space extremely well. Oh, the best. Yeah, the, the Thundercats figures that were- the I know, I know up. video game, I know Atari 2600, like Crazy Climber was a mail away act cartridge. Like I know Paper Mario, like, like I know my shit. Yeah, no, I'm no. sneaky. I'm sneakier about knowledge yeah. on that shit than people realize. Well, part of my channel is kind of going back to my childhood and the nostalgia, and it's maybe it's part of the midlife crisis thing. I'm approaching it's not, forty. It's not midlife yeah. crisis. It's happiness. It, it really is. Yeah, it midlife, is. midlife crisis is like doing selfish shit that like fuck. Like no, no, this is happiness. That's what I told my wife. The like sports cards thing is fucking crazy. Oh, I just got a mail package. Why don't you tell everybody about you? I'm gonna go to my package and share with you while because I don't get to share what I like because now I'm okay. all scared to like post shit because like the price goes up and everybody gets mad. But right. in this environment, I'm gonna just share what I just got. But why don't you tell everybody a little about that and then I want to hear your question. Yeah, so um, I started out about a hundred days ago. I've created a hundred and sixty plus videos on YouTube on my channel, the personal finance dad. Um, and it's, it's all around kind of getting back into the hobby. I was, uh, I got back in about two years ago after about a 25 year hiatus. I started collecting in the late eighties, early nineties, like a lot of, a lot of my peers that, that can relate. Um, and so just kind of getting back into it, going back to my childhood, um, started creating content, really having fun with it. And then it kind of, you know, segged into other things like video games and comic books. And, um, you know, we just kind of, kind of gone from there, but, um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's been a great time and it's a great community. It's amazing how many people are are getting back into it or just people that are new getting into it. It's it's wild. So um, not sure, you know, what more else to say, but actually I and Gary's talking about a mail day, you know, thing. I actually got a package. I got a letter from a kid, a 12 year old that sold me something on eBay that said, hey, he, it was a handwritten note from a 12 year old you know, that said, thank you very much for your purchase. We appreciate it. And it reminded me of when I was 10 years old, except I didn't have eBay and didn't have all these options to buy singles online. So it was just, it was refreshing. So it just shows you kind of all generations. Are oh, the, 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 the hobby's exploding and the happiness is absurd. Dustin, get in here. Tell, let's tell like Dustin, Dustin, like <laughs> Dustin, how much happiness has getting into collecting Pokemon and flipping Pokemon been for you? It's been surprisingly fun like i thought it would be stupid at first but now i'm kind of like really like in? i guess yeah because i feel like i guess i'm learning a skill in a way like oh yeah 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 <laughs> there's a lot of business and negotiation behind it i mean i was saying too and like when I was that, why, years, why think, yeah go ahead I, when i was eight years old i was battling with you know car, local card shop owners trying to negotiate out that was my first foray into business negotiation <laughs> was trying to buy cards at the local lcs Oh, are you kidding me? Like, like, of course I'm like, when people are like, you're like, you're a savant. I'm like, no, I'm well-trained. I've been doing this yeah. every day. Like it's no, it's a huge, huge thing. And it's, listen, there's nothing more fun than to have a ton of fun and it make you money versus it cost you money. Yeah. Most things that are super fucking fun cost money. 
Yeah. Spending two hours searching on eBay when you know what's going on and like trying to find that diamond in the rough and da da da, and you have fun with it, you're gonna make money doing that versus watching something on Hulu that you paid a subscription for to be entertained. You're being entertained to learn and to have fun. 100%. And most of all, it makes money, right? Listen, there are tens of millions of people out of a job. We are completely being disguised by COVID. Our government is just printing money to yeah. throw at the problem. Like the economy is going to get punched in the face. Like understanding how to make money right now. I've had over 25 people literally email. 25 is a big number with what I'm about to say because I've been counting it. Say that through DM and email that card flipping has fundamentally allowed their family to not be in a shitty situation during this time. And had they not heard me in October, November, January, last year, do it, like they would be, they lost their job and like they were paying their rent and eating, like like emotional shit. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, on the record for everybody who's watching, markets go down. And right. also there's some level of gambling. Let me give you an example. One of the things I'm most interested in is in gambling. So football's coming up. Obviously I love watching this, but when the Viking, yeah. when the Panthers are playing the Packers, I don't give a shit and I don't gamble. But now, this year, when the Panthers play the Packers, I'm gonna care because I have this weird feeling that Teddy Bridgewater is gonna have a good year and he's the starting quarterback in Carolina. And this is like fun for me now because like buying these and if he has a good year, boom. Or or then, there, then there's like other stuff. So like this one, like this just means a lot to me. Willis Reed is one of the greatest Knicks of all time. This is Love a it. almost perfect card, SGC 9.5 from a 1969 set. Think about how old that is. Yeah, it's one of the, yeah it's, and one of the great Knicks, right? So like, that's fun. I bought this, this was super interesting to me. These messy stickers were super cheap six months ago. Yeah. And he's obviously, and I think soccer cards are just, and stickers are gonna be some of the most expensive stuff. And they weren't like one of the most important things. It was a weird little set. It wasn't like the big one, but these have gone from like 80 to like 600 bucks in like a couple months, I was right because it's messy, it's 04 and PSA 10, right? And then my favorite thing, old basketball. These aren't even in great shape. These are literally from a hot dog company. Yeah. Literally, literally from Cons. The wiener that the world, of, look at this thing. Cons <laughs> wieners. <laughs> Dustin, that's funny to you. You like wiener, you're like an adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously like these are two of the most iconic players of all time, Oscar Robertson. Literally Jerry West is the logo on the fucking jersey. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so yeah. like that's that's why it's fun. That was my little stash that came in. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Um, What's the, your question? Yeah, the first question I wanted to ask you. So a lot of folks have, and this has caught the mainstream attention, we've seen this, but recently a LeBron RPA sold for the record $1.8 million. I guess my question is just from your, you know, your opinion on it, do you see more or any, I, I don't have any insight, institutional money coming in? This was yes. something that happened 15, yes. 20 years ago with coins, with rare yes. coins, and you saw, a, I mean, you know, pricing just went through the roof. Well, tell me about that. Educate me, Dustin, because the answer is yes. I believe that there's a stunning amount of real money, institutional money coming in. Um, I know of people that have been approached that are on Wall Street by others. I've, I've heard of conversations. I've been asked for my information of what I see, what I know. Yes, do I believe like, do I believe a hundred million dollars of five to 15 to 30 groups comes into the sports card world and starts buying up super premium stuff because this is this generation's art? Yes, I do. Do I think that a 52 year old high net worth individual from New York that wants to remember, or maybe 60 year old, that wants to remember that Knicks championship because we've sucked for so long that this, one of the only perfectly graded Willis Reed cards is actually worth 20 times what it's worth right now the second New York money comes in? Yes, I believe that. Right, yeah. You know, you know, and and I, and that's not me promote. Like, I get so frustrated when people are like Gary V. Like, I'm yes, I have an audience, and I'm sure I brought in a lot of awareness. But this was so. First of all, the only reason I've loved cards since I was eight. I've yeah. been, I've had notoriety and awareness for a decade. I didn't talk about cards because it wasn't happening. Right. I'm yeah. talking about it because it's happening. But the answer is yes, I do believe that's happening. Now, my question to you is, I've not educated myself on. 
I know that the coin market's a much bigger market than the card market, which makes no sense because nobody under 50 gives a fuck about coins That's and it. everybody, and, and a shocking amount under 50 care about cards, but I'm not educated on what happened to that scarcity. I'm more educated what happened with art in the turn of the century. Yeah. Educate me a little bit. What do you know about the yeah. coin? And, and it's very, my, my knowledge is very basic. That was just something that as I was doing research, I saw, I saw a graph, I saw a graph of it where literally institutional money got into rare coins and it shot through the absolute roof. And then within kind of a two year period, it, it started to, you know, it, it, it did come down, but it did create kind of a new floor, you know, for, for, you know, yeah. rare coins. Yeah. So it, and that, the that's answer, the, thing. The, the answer is yes. I want to move on to other subjects, but the answer yep. is absolutely yes. I, I think that this is early. The economy could collapse and people may not look for alternative investments that could change things. Markets go up and down. There's, you know, Teddy Bridgewater could get benched in two, week two. And like, that's why I don't really right. buy new stuff. This is more to entertain me. But, but this stuff, this yeah. stuff and the global icons that have already made it, right. they are yeah. absolutely no brainers to me. Next question, um, what what types of innovations would you like to see that could advance the hobby? You know, that you know, might- there's, there's only one big one. The machines that come along that grade cards instead of humans. Yeah. When AI technology, when that comes, it's gonna go through the roof. But That's, by the yeah. way, but yeah. humans judge antiques and art now. Yeah. So like, let's not, let's not, you know, forget that. So anyway, I gotta move on, Dustin. All Love right, you, pal. We'll talk soon. Thanks very much. There'll be a, there'll be a card only show. We'll make sure we get you back on. I love it. Thanks, Gary. Thank Bye. And and Bishi, when you say how dare you, card grading is an art. I'm a big fan. I just think that technology will help it because a lot of people are concerned about the human aspects of grading, where people manipulate and things of that nature. And you know, that's always a tension, like it is in any other human-based subjective world. And so I do think that technology will come. And that's not that's not my opinion, that's just knowing the advancements of technology that will eventually get there. Let's keep moving. Hi Gary, good morning. Hey Andrea, how are you? How are you? Thank you good. for your time. Thank you for, for doing Tea with Gary Vee. You're welcome. Real quick, everybody's watching, share squad time. It's share squad time. Andre, do this with me. Share, 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 share. Everybody share if you're watching. Go ahead, what's your question? Okay, so a quick story, um, quick, quick background. I work in the live and event industry. So in February of this year, I decided to uh, start doing my own shows, uh, go on my own, uh, producing my own projects, keep thriving. Um, in January of this year, I became pregnant. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so then, however, March came, COVID came. And then, of course, I mean, the majority of the events that I had confirmed or whether they were rescheduled canceled. or were canceled, yeah. Trust oh, me, okay. I know. Most of my money <laughs> comes from speaking, all gone to zero. So it's been an intense time. So, and also the uncertainty as well. So, um, but however, um, I mean, I've been working on new things. And then one of the things that I've been working is uh, woodworking. Okay. Well, so basically, uh, by the way, I've never worked with uh, wood before, like carved anything. So I started carving out uh, ki kitchen utensils out of wood um, all of a sudden. And then I really enjoyed it. Um, I do see a big vision in it, um, like in the near future, but however, I'm still learning in order for me to sell it out to the public and then provide this product out in the near future. So that's one thing. I mean, this is the one of the spatulas that I've done. So, so um, cool. good for yeah, you. I'm you. really proud of you. I think a lot of people during COVID exposed a lot of things where a lot of people had something bad happen, like live events or uh, restaurants. They fell into a huddle and cried yeah. and other people just attacked something else and innovated. I'm just really impressed by your will and your Thank creativity. You. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a roller coaster. I mean, it's just dealing with uh, so many emotions and also the pregnancy and everything. So. Of course. Um, but however, additionally, um, I work with a production company called Mestiza Productions. Um, before all COVID, I mean, this is, um, we work a live entertainment production company, uh, making audiovisual performances for uh, live, I mean, social events, corporate, so on. Um, and uh, I mean, we build uh, entertainment for presence of brands, product, promotional products, and so on and so forth. 
So um, with this is through live talent, drums, uh, percussion, musicians. And however, we've been pivoting and make taking these elements and then uh, providing the service to virtual events, the virtual events that are happening right now, making it more um, engaging, more interactive. You're becoming a production company in the reality of a digital virtual world instead of a physical one. Exactly. So, however, I mean, we're still trying to learn how can we do all these performances uh, with the musicians, with the dancers, with uh, the recording because it's pre-recorded. Um, and then, yes, so basically just providing the service to all the clients that we have or new in clients and basically just making it more a, a solution or making it more interactive with the audience, like something because you're sitting down and then on the computer and then just with the conference and making it more interactive. Um, so my question to you is my whole question. Um, how would, seeing all this, how would you manage, um, whether it's the woodworking, the pivoting in well, live events. And I, then got, I, got, I, have a huge, I have a huge answer for you. <laughs> the number one thing that you need to think about is not over judging yourself on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Yes. <laughs> I, I love every single thing that came out of your mouth. Thank you so much. You are trying, you're ambitious, you're thoughtful. The number one vulnerability you have is over judging yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has been. And also, I mean, it's also like all the struggling also because of all well, the pregnancy and then you have to feel good and then in order for you to, because you're carrying a living person inside of you, so. I've heard. <laughs> but anyhow, I mean, that's, that's. Um, Andre, please listen to this. It's the number one part. Yeah. <laughs> you, everything I've heard is phenomenal. It's going to be great. Thank and you. the only thing that you have to do is say, don't allow yourself to say, I should have done more, or fuck, I should have, I sh The words I should have are literally the worst combo of words that I can think of for most people. Because it leads to deep anxiety, it leads to anxiousness, it yeah. leads to sadness, which then leads, which yeah. then leads to people not being nice to other people. You know who's not nice? People that are hurting. Mm -hmm. And do you know who, do you know how one gets hurt? they overjudge themselves. They decide they're a bad person without realizing they're actually a hurt person and, and, and are wonderful but just are hurt. They decide that the world is unfair because they, they weren't lucky enough to have work ethic and they just are entitled and think everything should come to them. You are fucking killing it with your energy. <laughs> I, I want you to first be, you should, like my hope for you without knowing you is for you to enjoy this pregnancy Thank it's you so, so special, <laughs> it's so special. I want you to know that everything's gonna be okay. When you have this kind of energy and this kind of ambition and this kind of creativity, it's all gonna be okay. I want you to know you have time. I, I left my family business at 34 years old with nothing. No, or I didn't have any net worth. I, like, I started VaynerMedia in the conference room of another company because I had no money to pay for rent. Hmm. I didn't judge myself like, oh, that was stupid to build that business for my family. It was, it made me proud. Mm -hmm. I was 34. Wow. I was 34 years old. <laughs> I had saved a lot of money in my 20s, but I just put that into Facebook and Twitter because I thought it was gonna work and guess what it did. And so I didn't have money. I was 34. Wow. I was 34 and couldn't, and had no business, had no VaynerMedia, had, no notoriety, had no speaking career, had not written a book, got no, had made zero dollars in speaking. And I was pumped because I knew I had talent, I knew that I had ambition, mm -hmm. and I knew I had time. <clears throat> and when I see Lee J. Plummer in the comments right now say, I feel good at, that. this makes me good at 35. How old are you? Me, uh, 32. You have unlimited time. <laughs> yes. Um, 32, 33, 34, 41. I'm 44 right now and I fucking, when I tell you I feel so young, I don't think I've, I don't think I've even started. As everything that's happening, I don't think, you know, the distance between where I'm at now to get to this ownership is very far. And I'm not crippled by it because I'm just starting. Yeah. And I've got people in the comments right now that are 27, 29, 29 is a fucked up age because everyone's like, oh, 30 and it's all. <laughs> society, society has made a huge mistake 
in the way that we taught people about age. I mean, I'm interacting with 63 year olds that are just realizing that they're leaving corporate America and starting their own business and they've never been more alive. And they're 63 and healthy and vibrant and acting like they're 42 from a generation earlier because we're all younger, we're eating better, we're taking care of ourselves more. The only mistake you can make is beating yourself up. You've got everything. Should you do more woodwork? Maybe. Sure. Should, you, should you learn more about virtual events? Maybe. Do I think virtual events are gonna be huge forever? Yes, I do, and I think you, you should can. double down on that. But the number one thing you need to do is enjoy this pregnancy because it's extremely special and woodwork and production and business and fucking money, it will all be there. Okay. Enjoy it, don't beat yourself up. It's not the time to be stressed. Yeah, I mean, it's of course it's been, uh, um, it's been a roller it's, coaster. It's always, <laughs> it could also, listen, Everyone's like, it's a roller coaster, it's so intense, cool. Let's all role play. In two years from now, COVID's all set, we're back to normal. Mm -hmm. And then your best friend dies of cancer. And then, and then your government has an election and goes to fascism. And then your, your partner dies of a heart attack. And then your child gets diagnosed with a disease. Life is always. <sighs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Do you know that if COVID started, three months earlier, Kobe Bryant would be alive. Yeah. Life was super fine in January yeah. in America. If COVID started in December, Kobe wouldn't be in that helicopter. He'd be alive for another 60 years. Life is unpredictable. It is. <laughs> so do you know how many people's lives were saved by COVID because their destiny was to be on a highway and get into an accident that night, but they were stuck at home complaining that they're bored? Wow. Yeah. People don't, <laughs> people don't understand life. Yeah. We need yeah. a better perspective. You are so lucky. You're lucky. Do you know how many women right now are crying every day in their sleep because they can't get pregnant? Yes. I mean, I've thought of that, about that every day. I mean. I believe you. I'm not saying you don't. I'm talking to the audience right now. Like, be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for what you have instead of stressed about what isn't going well. Every day I have thousands of things, hundreds of things, tens of things not going well. I run a huge company. There's unlimited things going on. I have a big personality. There's always hate being thrown at. Like, I can't dwell on that. I have to be too grateful for the health of the people I love. The end. Gratitude is the formula. It is. <laughs> so, the, so one long-winded answer for, the right <laughs> answer for you is don't beat yourself up. You are clearly, clearly, a fortunate person with the right ingredients to figure it out. Thank you so much. Enjoy this. <laughs> figure out how to enjoy this. Enjoy, you know, there's so many kids complaining that they're at home with their parents and this is the last chapter that they're ever gonna have meaningfully with their parents before their parents die and they're not enjoying it, they're complaining about it. Yes. And in three years, they're gonna cry like a baby looking back to the six months they were at their parents' house during COVID and wish they played more board games and wish they did come downstairs and watch TV with their mom. Like people take shit for granted out here. Yeah, um, yeah. And things like this, I mean, you know, it's whether, I mean, sometimes I just think about the future, but then sometimes I am like grateful, like, oh my God, thank you so much. It's giving me more time to just sit down and it just, be with my baby and then just the pregnant thing. Yeah. And by the way, I respect the shit out of you. I do the same. I love that you have a thought to the future. You have to strategize. It's good. But it can't cripple you. And most of all, you have to recognize you're just a human being. You're doing the best you can. Yes. <laughs> awesome. That's it. Thank Take you care. so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's keep it going. It sure is cat heart. Gary B. What's good, Sean? What's good, bro? I like the hat. <laughs> Thank you. Yours too, man. But, bro, Gary, you changed my fucking life, man. Like, both, like, financially and, like, mentally. And, like, I got a story that I think is going to, like, impact, like, everyone listening right now. So, uh, last June, I started uh, watching your garage sale videos. Okay. And I'm, like, I'm like, fuck, I can do that shit. And at the time, bro... I only had fifty dollars in my bank account. Fifty dollars. And did you I have did you have did you have debt? Uh yeah, because I'm a college student too. 
so and I had a part time job, so I was like still doing shit, but I was still doing that. On the so you're, you're, you have 50 bucks, you see the video, yeah. and you're like, fuck, that's not investing in Facebook and Twitter, that's not <laughs> yeah. starting Vayner Media, that's not that's something I can do, Sean. Yeah. I don't want to get emotional, but the single reason I did that show was for what you just said. Mm -hmm. I, I'm that. so happy and I think the world is so abundant that the only fucking thing I want right now, the only thing that, like the true thing that drives me is to help people get happy. And I came from dirt, bro. Same, bro. <laughs> I wasn't giving shit. Yeah. Like, and I fucking figured it out with humility and fucking work ethic and education and okay. trash talk is education. So keep going. You've got me, you got me on tilt. <laughs> Go ahead. So you see it, you're like, fuck, I can do that. I got 50 yeah. fucking dollars. Keep going. So I started going to garage sales, thrift, like thrift stores. And I'd buy shit for a dollar and like, I'd even like sell it for like two or three dollars. On and what? Uh, Craigslist? Facebook Marketplace? Because uh, two, three dollars on, but on eBay, eBay with fees and shipping, like how did you yeah. make that mainly, work? Mainly eBay. Uh, but I would like slowly like build it up. You were just learning. Up. Even if you made 50 yeah, cents, yeah. you were learning. You were learning. Yeah, fact, Even if yeah. you lost money where the shipping cost you more than you thought, it yeah. was kind of okay because you were like, fuck, I'm learning. Yeah, and plus that like builds up your feedback and like it helps other stuff build up in eBay too. And uh, and yeah, I think just like anyone can do that because I only had $50 in my bank account. I was still working a part-time job. And other people can do that too. And like the other like inspirational thing is like, I'm also a college student and I was working th this past school year, I was working three times, three part-time jobs plus a full-time college student. And so like the whole thing, like people say, oh, I don't have time. It's like, that proves it wrong. Like three part-time jobs. Every, bro, everybody has time. Hell people, yeah, bro. People literally yeah. reply to me during feeds like this, I don't have time. Yeah. While, while watching me. The fuck are you watching me if you don't have time? <laughs> yeah, you gotta do, man. I didn't watch Gary Vee when I was a kid. Like, mm. if I, like, I wouldn't watch shit. I'd be doing. Nonetheless, tell, give me some highlight stories. Like, so now you're doing it. What was your first breakthrough? What was the first thing you bought cheap and made some real money on? You're like, yo, this is fucking different. Uh, I bought like this little Einstein's plane thing and it had like all the figures and everything. So it was like complete. For five dollars at thrift at thrift store, and I sold it for a hundred on eBay. I'm like, "Fuck, dude! It's something <laughs> just stupid like that, you know?" <laughs> and like, you just keep learning and learning and learning, bro. And then shit gets better. And like, bro, this last month I just did 10k in sales, and I started with 50 in my bank account, bro. And like, and the thing is, anyone can do this shit. Dude. I know. The fuck you so think like, I'm talking about out here? Yeah. So I really want And bro, to I have a whole generation of guys yeah. and girls watching me who love gambling on sports when this is happening. You yeah. need a high, you need an extra high to watch sports because you love it so much. Don't gamble on the Panthers. Gamble on their quarterback. If he sucks, it goes down 20%. If he's right, it goes up 500%. Yeah. <laughs> instead of like 50-50 of losing all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to take that risk. So like, I really want people like to go follow my Instagram that I linked right okay. here. Go ahead. Cause I, I, I really, I want to show people that they can do this too. And cause I know like there's that college student out there or that mom out there that's struggling to put like food on the table next week. And like, you can do this shit like 15 minutes. So bro, I'm looking at your content. I yeah. really, you need to do more how to, cause I'm looking at it right now and mm -hmm. it's more highlight reel. Yeah. And what you really need to do is like, if you want people to follow you, and I, I get the flex of like having more followers, and you're yeah. at 299 now from 260, and I'm sure I'll go to a thousand real quick here. <laughs> My, but if you're good, if you're gonna keep them, you got to give them value, and yeah, yeah. like, you know, this is great, and it shows that it's true. Mm -hmm. But you got to do what I do. The reason, you know, trash talk costs me money. D Rock's not free. My yeah. team's spending time producing, not free. My time's not free. But I'm showing them. So mm -hmm. you need to really, really, really show them, yeah. like real and educate them. Make video. You know, I see you yeah. getting sports card flip. Yeah. How much? How much did you pay for this Trey Young that you sold for three thirty eight? Uh, like two hundred. Dude, the sports card thing's been crazy, huh? Yeah, and I I got two Lucas back in February, bro. When you were talking about when I was it. talking about it, what'd you pay for it? 
two fifty. Now they're like almost a thousand, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! No, it's man. happening. Listen, it's fucking happening out here. And by the way, car, you know, cards could go down, but garage sales, true, yeah, they're buying for dollars, selling for yeah. that shit, never going anywhere. Yeah. So I, please, everyone, if you're watching, like, please go follow it because it'll, it'll make me want to go even harder. Like, really, it'll help me. Like bro, push myself to go hear help me, you guys. Hear me, hear me, hear me real quick. It can't be about you. Yeah, true. Flip it. I don't. I, no, yeah, no, listen. I don't I'm listening. I'm listening to you, Sean. <laughs> you said, "Hey, follow me, so yeah. I could be more motivated to go harder." You're making it selfish. You mm -hmm. want to grow? Be selfless. Selfless. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That this is where everyone gets caught. This is why you won't. You may win the flip game, but you will not win <laughs> the social media content game because I'm listening to you. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm trying to help you right now. This isn't yeah. about come follow me, make my self-esteem up at a thousand, I can flex. Yeah. This is about how do I bring them the most value? This team with Gary V for this hour, do you know what kind of money I'm could be making or doing things that I need to be doing in this hour? This isn't yeah. about watch my show. When I say <laughs> share, 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 I'm not looking for more fucking followers. I'm looking to impact more people's lives so that the Sean stumbles upon me and goes from $50 in his bank account to 10K a fucking month. Yeah, facts. Facts. Make it yeah. about them, bro. You want to be mm. like me? Make it about them, not about you. Okay. Yeah. I promise. Because right now you're <laughs> about you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Because that's the old yeah. Sean that had 50 bucks too. And then he heard Gary Vee and he fucking went. Now yeah. you're here together with me. I hope you hear me. Make it about them. Yeah. I really, in the end, like I really just want to help people, man. No, no. You're still too early to, for me to fully believe that. You still okay. need too much for you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's fair. <laughs> it is fair because it's true because I'm listening to you and I'm watching you. But that's okay. But make it about them if you want to grow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. I wish you well. All right. See you. Talk to you. Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> $50 in bank account to 10000 a month. Yeah, that's when, it, when you said that. That was crazy. Bro, you could make ten thousand a month on Pokemon cards if you get fucking serious here. You're laughing. I'm being dead fucking serious. No, I know, oh, but dude, Pokemon's twenty fifth anniversary next year. Yeah, that's yeah. Do you understand how hot they're gonna be? And what you need to do is you need to buy one for three hundred, sell it for six hundred. You don't have the bankroll that I have, so you have to leave some money on the table. You have to buy a card for three hundred, sell it in a month for six hundred by doing homework, picking the right one. It's gonna suck because that same card's gonna be two thousand in a year, but you don't have the depth of a bank account, so you need to just keep flipping so that in six months you have thirty thousand in profit. Then you go ham. Then that thirty becomes a hundred. Do you see where I'm going? Mm. The biggest problem for people right now is they're like, fuck, this is gonna keep going up, but they don't have the bank. You don't have enough liquid. Yeah. So you need to buy, sell, buy. So this is what I did as a kid. Now I've worked my fucking face off for 25 years to have the luxury of like, you know, really going in and not having to flip and maximizing. But as a kid, I would buy Ken Griffey for two bucks, sell for three bucks, even though I know it was going to five. You gotta buy a Squirtle, flip it, and then buy something else that you think is, like there's so many things that people haven't figured out. Like there's Pokemon, Charizard right now will go up, but there's cards right now that people haven't figured out or underpriced. You have to get deep into that world, be like, wait a minute, the base cards or the trainer cards are actually underpriced. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. That's how you win. Not sitting with your collection and looking at it. Right. Very good point. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm always, I'm still doing a lot of like researching, like, like just watching YouTube videos of people, like the experts doing it. Oh, so much free content on there. Yeah. You know, Yash Shago's sports cards are not popular in India yet. Soccer cards will be Yash. Pokemon will be. Maybe not American football. Basketball maybe, and maybe never. And that's okay. Buy them and ship them to people in America. I'm buying shit from all over the place. <laughs> You know what I haven't gotten into yet that I'd like to is Magic the Gathering. Big shout out to Robbie Turnick, my best friend as a child. He, uh, he, uh, he was right on Magic the first year. I was like, what is this nerd shit? <laughs> yeah, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Love it, though, for real. All right, let's keep going. 
Gary, Sean, what's going on, brother? What's going on is that you have a more professional mic than me, and everybody keeps yelling <laughs> at me. I don't give a fuck. That's what's going on, Sean. Oh, I have it all set. I had it all set up. I figured I'd use it. But thanks for uh, thanks for your time, man. I wanted to give you a, a little background of my life. Uh, my brother and sister died when I was fifteen. About eleven years later. I apologize. I, I'm, I'm so sorry to ask, but like tragic accident. Yeah, at Thanksgiving in '99, they died in a car accident. Yeah. I'm so sorry. But. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about it, man. I mean, the the pain, learning from your pain and your struggle. How old were you and how old were they? I was 15. Uh, my sister was 21 and my brother was 18. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, my friend. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. But you know, fast forward 11 years, I had a terrible divorce. I have two kids. Um, I ended up getting a prescribed pain pills, hooked on heroin. I was basically at the point of being homeless. Got a, got arrested for stealing, out of jail, from, from jail to short-term rehab, long-term rehab. And then I was actually still in my long-term rehab out on passes when I started a podcast centered around mental why? health, mental health and addiction. I was why, sitting why in, you start a podcast. What inspired you to do that? Uh, every night, uh, Room 9, which is the name of my company. Um, I was in Room 9, my long-term treatment facility. And my roommate and I, we were always just talking about life you know how are we gonna get better how are we gonna fix our shit how are we gonna get our shit together and so i was like dude we should start a podcast and that's what we did and so <clears throat> fast forward you know a little bit even further now it's going on two years i think i got over 90 episodes now every monday 10 a.m and i've got a grant from new york state a small grant to start video production and so i kind of am moving into that and my main goal is to really get stories together of people who have struggled with mental health and addiction and how they've struggled with it, how they overcame it and really kind of just get a collection of those stories together. I'm proud of you, man. I'm Thank really, you. I really admire you. I appreciate it. Yeah. My, uh, my life, all my social life is gone now. I'm just trying to learn the pr premier pro after for everything, you know, getting into illustrator graphic design and really trying to put all the pieces together. But my, I guess I've been on this waiting list to talk to you for three weeks now, and yeah. I'm not even the same person I was three weeks ago, just from wow. what I've learned and everything. And so my question, like, what am I going to ask this dude uh, is, uh, is has changed a, bu a bunch of times. I mean, I know. You, yeah. And I know you, I mean, you, you talk about patience, man, and patience with time, patience with everything, um, your relationship with failure. I think that's something I really want to push out to a lot of people is if you can open your eyes amongst pain, you can, 100%. you can change your entire life. I mean, you can learn so much in that darkness. And I think that's something I really want to push out. But my, I guess my question to you getting to it is I really have fallen a lot in love with brand strategy and really like, all right, what is a person's gut feeling when they think about my company? Yes. And I just kind of, I found I've been able to take my shittiness for my addiction, my conning, my, talking with people, convincing them, and using that in a positive, powerful way. Sean, they're kissing cousins. My mom and dad, literally every day, like every day I'm around them, say, my God, if you ended up being bad instead of so good, you would have been the worst human of all time. <laughs> like literally, like they're yep. like, they compare me to like some of the worst people of all time. I actually sometimes, I rare, I don't, I'm, I'm not a praying man, but sometimes I literally look up because I know I have such talent to communicate and I, and, and I just say, thank you God for not letting me be selfish and bad because I would have fucked this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, when I hear you say that, I get it so much, brother. I get it so, by the way, it's such a gift and a power that I feel like, I feel this is a meta moment. I, I can't control the fact that I had to like live the Gary V life. I have to give love. It's, it's, it's almost like I'm being forced to by my chemicals because I'm so capable of communicating things in, in a way that almost every other human doesn't have that ability. Yeah. You're exactly right. All those abilities you had on the bad, they're equally, you just flip the coin. You were on tails, bro. You were on tails. And thank God that you had the strength to flip it and now you're on heads and it's gonna fucking work. I want to listen to your podcast. I don't want to listen to shit. <laughs> That'd be great. You should actually come on sometime. It's, how about this? 
it's done. I'm on. Awesome. Beautiful. Talk to whoever you've talked to on this, and I'll be on in August. It's All done. Right. Locked Beautiful. in. I and, love and, it. And the reason I'm doing it is because I know that if you have me on, that you can then cold email everybody on earth and say Gary Vaynerchuk was on and you're going to get a lot of yeses. I'm giving. I don't have fucking half hour to be on your fucking show, Sean. <laughs> but I'm forced, I'm forced out of my gratitude to do it. I'm being dead fucking serious. Absolutely. I, I know you're busy as fuck, man. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I not, appreciate not, that greatly. I'm busy enough to not give. I appreciate it. And I think I think that's such an important message you give to so many people that it is it's all about giving. And that's why I love branding as opposed to advertising because branding is about hey, give give give, you know, and let's pull you in. And that's why I've kind of have totally read, fallen in love. Did you read Jab 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 Ray Hook? I have not yet. No. Dustin, can we send this guy Jab 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 Ray Hook? All right, that's on the way. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate your time, dude. Have you got into sports cards yet or Pokemon? I have not gotten into any sports cards. It's funny you talked about coins and no kids uh, like them. My 13-year-old loves collecting coins. I love it. Big shout out to the 13-year-old. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't razzing. I didn't, you know, that's cool. Uh, did you grow Did you collect when you were a kid any of that stuff? Um, I did, actually. Yes, show me, Sean. Show me. These are nothing, but I just found these in the okay. basement. If you remember these... Uh, Oh, and to disappoint you, I'm from Buffalo, by the way. These pro sets, do you remember of, these? Of course, I had an ungodly amount of pro set hockey. I I had so many, and then before that, there was score. I had so many score Eric Lindros rookie cards, you can't imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, even though I hate the Bills, I secretly have a lot of respect for Sabres fans. That's been a, I like franchises that don't win. That's and, Buffalo. And, and, and then have good, good fans. I have a lot of respect for Buffalo secretly. I can't like the Bills because they beat the fuck out of the Jets in the 80s. They, you know, you went to four fucking Super Bowls in a row. Um, but uh, listen, brother, I love your energy. I'm so proud of you. Keep fighting. I know, you know, listen, unfortunately, humans are undereducated on addiction. This is not something mm -hmm. you cured. This is something you battle daily. And I have a lot of respect for you. And I really am excited to come on room9podcast.com and uh, and I'll see you in a little bit. And uh and uh, and I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're here in the macro. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. It was it was a switch that flipped Wait, it. Did we answer the question or are we just hanging out? Is there a question? Yeah, kind of. I talked, I was asking you about branding. <laughs> well, let me I mean, here's branding. It's about what I just said to Sean earlier. It's about them, not you. It's about listening. You know, everyone's so confused. I interrupt people, this and that. They're like, you're always talking fucking loud. I'd love to hear your fucking own voice. No, I don't. Fucking listen 24 hours a day and then once in a while have a moment to talk. I'm fucking listening 24 hours a day, Sean. I'm reading more comments, more DMs, more emails, more texts from my community than any fucker on earth. I'm so busy that I'm not replying like I used to, but I haven't stopped listening at all. I'm fucking hearing you. It's how I bring up my content. It's how it goes. Branding and marketing is about the customer not about your selfish wants and needs. That's why Fortune 500 companies struggle. That's why VaynerMedia has helped them so much. And that's why so many influencers suck. And that's why I'm helping them so much. And that's what you need to focus on. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, brother. And for, for really, really quick, for anybody who out there, um, it, was just, it was a switch for me. It just happened where I just started loving myself. And if you don't take care of yourself and love yourself and have confidence in yourself and have confidence to fail, I mean, Sean, that's the biggest thing. It's because everybody else sucks too. Yeah. We listen, all suck. Listen, brother, you went through a super painful thing. I don't know what kind of person you were at 15, if that was inevitable that you were going to go down a tough path because of the chemicals, because of the parenting. But fuck, bro, to go through that kind of tragedy, that's a shock. No, it is. Yep. You know, and I didn't even realize how much it fucked me up until probably a decade later. Of course, because, you know, whatever, you you know, again, we, I'm running out of time. I got to run to a client, but maybe you were trying to be strong for your parents. I, I don't know your circumstance, but it, it, it's the subconscious that takes over. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Gary. Well, I'll let you get going, brother. I uh, I appreciate your time, man. You're the best. Matt, Peace. I saw you in the comments. Big shout out to you. Way to fight through that meth addiction. Thank you, Sean. I love everybody. I hope everybody's super well. Um I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Or I don't know. Am I tomorrow, Dustin? Yep. Oh. All right.
I want no to get Friday, though. <laughs> Just tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody. Please, 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 let's get a fuckload of people watching this shit. We're helping out here. See ya.